Before we begin, a big thanks to this user for their generous super thanks contribution. If you're already a subscriber and have found the content valuable, then consider sending a super thanks to support the channel. Remember, every bit counts and is greatly appreciated. Before we start comparing these two memory types, let's understand the term common between both. That is RAM. RAM stands for Random Access Memory. But does that mean ROM, which is considered to be the opposite of RAM, isn't random access? Not really. In fact, nowadays, all kinds of memory provide random access, meaning you can access locations in the memory randomly without sticking to a sequential order. So that's RAM for you. Now, what about D and S? For that, let's peek into the cell structure of these memories. This is a DRAM cell. It contains an access transistor and a capacitor. The access transistor, as its name conveys, provides access to the capacitor. The charge stored on the capacitor represents a bit. No charge on the capacitor indicates a zero, while a fully charged capacitor means one. But is that all? Well, there's a tiny problem. The charge stored on a capacitor cannot stay indefinitely, as capacitors leak charge over time. Also, the transistor isn't an ideal switch. Therefore, to keep the data intact, the charge needs to be refreshed periodically. That's why this type of memory, which requires periodic refreshing, is known as dynamic RAM or DRAM. In contrast, there is another type of memory which does not require any refresh cycles. In this type of memory, the charge remains stable as long as power is supplied to it. Hence, it is called static RAM or SRAM. Now let's peek into its cell structure. A typical SRAM cell contains six transistors, two access transistors and four transistors at the core. A pair of transistors form an inverter. Two such inverters are cross-coupled. As long as power is supplied, the cross-coupling stabilizes the inverters to their respective states, creating a feedback loop. And this keeps the information or the bit intact. So if there is a 1, you will get a 0 because it's an inverter, which is provided as an input to the other inverter. And that's why you get a 1 at the output of that. So as you can see, because of the cross-coupling, the inverters are able to retain the value. And in this case, it is 1. To put things into perspective, let's think of DRAM cells as water buckets with a hole at the bottom. Thus, they require periodic filling. On the other hand, think of SRAM cells as light switches, which are bistable. Due to the difference in cell structure, the most obvious difference lies in how data is accessed in both types of memory. Let's explore these differences. As you may recall, in DRAM, the transistor provides access to the capacitor during both read and write operations. It acts like a switch. During a write operation, the capacitor is either charged to represent a 1 or emptied to represent a 0. During a read operation, the charge on the capacitor is sensed. Now, due to this sensing procedure, reading a bit value of 1 result in slight loss of charge, while reading a 0 result in slight gain of charge on the capacitor. Thus, reads are destructive in DRAMs and are always followed by a write operation to restore the charge on the capacitor. If you are interested in details of DRAM read and write operations, then subscribe to the channel as a video on this topic will be uploaded soon. In SRAM, the access transistors provide access to the cross-coupled inverters. Here as well, they act like switches. During a write operation, either a 1 or 0 is written to the inverters. Cross-coupling helps in retaining the value. During a read operation, the value available on the inverters is sensed. Now, unlike DRAM, Read operation in this case isn't destructive because there's no capacitor which is going to get charged and discharged. 
for an in-depth explanation of SRAM read and write operations, subscribe to the channel. Video on this topic will be live soon. Now, let's compare the speed or performance of both types of memory. Accessing data in DRAM involves the inherently time-consuming process of charging and discharging of the capacitor. Additionally, due to the natural tendency of capacitors to lose charge, periodic refresh cycles are required after approximately every 64 milliseconds. So, these factors cause a slowdown in access time. On the other hand, SRAM uses transistors that change states quickly, resulting in faster access times. Typical access times for DRAM range from 45 to 65 nanoseconds, while in SRAM, direct access without any refresh cycles results in faster speed, typically ranging from 1 to 4 nanosecond for smaller memory and 8 to 20 nanosecond for larger ones. Now, let's take another look at the cell structure. Each DRAM cell contains just one transistor, while an SRAM cell contains a complex structure of six transistors. It is like comparing a simple house with a mansion. The smaller size of DRAM cell allows us to squeeze more of these in a unit area, giving us larger memory capacities and higher densities compared to SRAM. Apart from that, the complex cell structure of SRAM result in higher manufacturing costs. Thus, higher manufacturing costs combined with lower density result in expensive SRAM. So, the next time someone asks why SRAM is more expensive than DRAM, you will have the answer. Now that we've covered most of the differences, let's discuss the applications in computers. SRAM is favored for its high speed, making it ideal for cache memory in computers. Small amount of SRAM cache works wonders, significantly boosting performance. Not only does it provide high performance, but its small size also helps in keeping the overall size of the system compact and the costs affordable. Speaking of cache memory, do check out a video on this channel that explains the differences between cache memory and registers. Link is on top right of the screen. Now, on the other hand, DRAM is preferred for its high density and low cost. It serves as the main memory in computers. It is also known as working memory or system memory. So when someone asks about the available RAM in a computer, know that they are referring to DRAM. In consumer-grade computers, you can find DRAM ranging anywhere from 4 GB, which is like the minimum, to 128 GB, while high-end workstations and servers can support much larger capacities, sometimes up to several terabytes. Larger capacities allow us to juggle multiple applications seamlessly. Now, stay tuned for an upcoming video discussing the memory hierarchy in computers on this channel. Hit the subscribe button if you don't want to miss out. Now let's quickly review the key differences between DRAM and SRAM. We started with the abbreviations. After looking at the cell structure, we found that DRAM requires periodic refresh cycles to keep its content intact, which is why it is called dynamic RAM. In contrast, SRAM does not require refresh cycles and the charge on it remains stable. Hence, it is called static RAM. Next, we briefly discussed the read and write operations. DRAM write is performed by charging or discharging the capacitor, whereas in SRAM, data is written to the cross-coupled inverters. Read operation in DRAM is destructive, thus a write operation always follows the read to restore the charge on the capacitor. Whereas during SRAM read, data remains intact, thus it is non-destructive. Next, we discussed speed or performance. Difference in speed is majorly because of the difference in the internal circuitry. Capacitors slow down the speed in DRAM, and in case of SRAM, transistors switch state quickly, providing faster access times. Upon revisiting the cell structure, we found that a DRAM cell with just one transistor occupies less space compared to an SRAM cell, which is made up of a more complex structure of six transistors. 
from that observation, we concluded that more number of DRAM cells can be squeezed in a unit area compared to SRAM cells. Thus, DRAM has high density, which also implies high memory capacity. From this, we inferred that low density and high manufacturing costs due to complex structure makes SRAM more expensive than DRAM. Finally, we discussed the applications. DRAM is used as main memory, whereas SRAM is used as cache memory in computers. Okay, now last but not least, which one do you think consumes more power? It is a tricky question to answer. Let's go back to the cell structure. Now, due to continuous refresh cycles, DRAM might seem like an obvious answer. But remember the definition of SRAM? As long as the power is supplied, it maintains its state, which means the inverters continuously draw power to maintain their state. So is it SRAM then? Well, SRAM is known to consume minimal power when in standby mode. But if it is accessed frequently, which is usually the case, then it will certainly consume more power than DRAM. Thus, it is also known to generate more heat than DRAM. However, there are SRAMs that consume low power and these are used in battery-operated devices and consumer appliances. But they operate at much lower speeds. So the answer to this question is, it depends. It depends entirely on the application. Would you like to elaborate on this further? If yes, then provide your inputs in the comment section. If you found this video valuable and want to support this channel, then consider sending a super thanks. Like the video, do share it with your peers. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button for even more fantastic videos on computer architecture. And, and while you're at it, check out the computer architecture playlist as well. It's packed with incredibly informative and amazing content. Thank you for watching this video until the end. I'll see you in the next one.